Hey guys, thanks for joining me again today. Today we're going to look at an interactive card from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to make three out-of-the-box teacher cards with this. So this is the Swish and Pop pull tab die from Lawn Fawn. We'll be looking at that. I want to make sure that if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. So let's get started here. Everything that I use, I'm going to put in the description below. So these are all the pieces. I've just put them on a magnetic sheet that you have in this set from Lawn Fawn. So we're going to look at how each of them work and what they cut out. I'm also going to give you my suggestion on how many of these to cut out. We're going to start with the piece that's on the far right. This is the tab. So this is kind of what you're pulling on to make the mechanism work. I cut this out of the heaviest weight cardstock that I have and I still feel like if you put two of them together it will be a little less flimsy especially depending on how far um, that tab goes you know the shorter it is the less flimsy but I'm going to put this on a slim line and it really does need to be two this I have no idea what to call it I kind of think it looks like a flag from a mailbox but this is not cut out of paper it's cut out of the heaviest duty acetate that you can find and when I used my Gemini Junior it didn't cut these little holes out so I just used a piercer tool to pierce through them but these holes and the hole on the end of the tab that we just looked at are going to require two small brads so to make this card you have almost everything you need but you definitely need two small brads and you need foam tape so this is how these two fit together and then you see that acetate piece is going to swish across and this could work on so many different cards it's so fun to have something interactive this little L piece with the dots is kind of a measuring tool. So it helps you know um, where to put this on your card because you need to cover up the mechanism. So it makes sure that you have at least that much space at the bottom of the card. So I could have moved it here. I could have moved it down just a little bit if you see how that edge goes. But that little side, the bottom part of the L is showing you how far up the card to make it. And you can do these from either side, depends on where you want your swishing part to go. But it, the four dots for me, even with a slim line, seem to work great. This next one is a small die, the smallest one in the set, that cuts out the end piece for the tab. So it's got an arrow going in the appropriate direction for what how you're going to pull this tab. And it has a score line in the middle so you can fold it over the edge. I like to do this in a color that coordinates with the card, but it stands out against this white so that people realize that they do need to pull on the card right here. The last piece in this set has some cool features. You see I'm pointing to these two little arrows here. This is how you're going to line it up on the pull piece. I think that's just brilliant because a lot of times when you're looking at the side, you have to flip it over to get it on your paper so you're not looking at where it goes. And those arrows stick off the side so you can just find where your tab is, line it up between those two arrows like this. I'm going to show you, of course, on a real card. But that way you know how to make it even and it punches out a little notch there so that um, you can grab it easily with your finger. Okay, so this next part I sped up as everybody probably knows how to ink blend. I did use new colors. So Salty Ocean Peacock Feathers have been around for a little while, but the Salvaged Patina has not, and it looks really good with these. So I wanted to give you the chance to see it up close and look at the blending brushes, which I attached to blending brushes. I still just don't like the daubers as much. Um, I know there's people who are the exact opposite, but I love using blending brushes, especially these from Tailored Express. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would appreciate it so much if you'd go do that. And of course, if you're interested in anything in this video, feel free to send me a message. I will link to all the products below. So no worries on taking notes or doing anything different or having to rewind this video. It will all be there. So here's the new color, Salvaged Patina. I love this color. It's lighter than peacock feathers you can see it kind of blended close to peacock feathers right there but it goes very well with that and i love it it is a beautiful color it kind of reminds me of tiffany um, bags and and boxes it's just so beautiful and it looks great for this ocean sky scene that i'm working on i threw in a little bit more ink blending but mainly to show you what i did here so i do not have slimline 
hills or anything like that to make this sandy dunes that I'm going to do. So what I did is I took a stencil, did a little light line, and just fussy cut it. So just one of those other uses for stencils. Stencils are so inexpensive and dies are so pricey that for, I believe the stencil is $6 instead of maybe $25 for cutting it out with a die cutting machine. So just remember when you've got limited supplies and money, like most of us do, there are some other ways to get that same look and have it look really cool. After I get this all covered with antique linen, I'm using brushed corduroy and some water and tapping it on. Next, I'm going to speed up this coloring, but I wanted you to see the colors that I used and what kind of look I got on these boxes. I used E00 for their belly and the bottom part of their face, the inside of their ears. This is just barely color. You'll see that it shows up, but it just kind of keeps it from being a bright white, and it looks like a, you know, very, very, very light flesh tone. So for coloring the orange part of the foxes, I used YR04 as the base color, and then I went back in with YR08, to start with the shadows. I decided that I was going to put my shadows kind of on the bottom of this image, like the sun is right overhead on a bright sunny beach day. I used to have a lot of trouble trying to decide where that was going to be, but as long as you make it consistent, like your light is coming from one source, I feel like this really makes your images stand out. This C3, I added just a slight little bit in these areas just to give it a little bit more shadow. And then I'm going to go back in with my YR04 and color this in and blend it. If you notice, one of my tips about Copics is using gray in the shadows just to help you, especially if you don't have a lot of markers. It helps you get a good color variety, but also to make sure that you color areas that aren't right next to each other, if at all possible. Sometimes I can do that. Sometimes they I can't, but these markers really um, soak through the page and they can soak into your areas next to it if you're doing a lot of coloring. So just be careful with that. Here's what the final coloring looks like on that fox. One of putting this card together is making these holes that you're going to attach your mechanism to. So it's got four. If I wanted to flip this over and do it on the other side of the card, I could make it there. I felt like this position worked great for the card I was going to make because I was going to take up that left portion of the card with a palm tree or an umbrella, something like that. So it doesn't have to swish all the way to the other side of the card. You'll see what I mean after this. I left this in because it shows you a close-up of how to line up this L die. You want to make sure that you've got the short end of the L on the edge of your card. And you see it's got to meet the edge, or you can put, move it up anywhere higher, but you need that much space at the bottom for the mechanism to work. Let me show you how this flag piece that I call it goes together with its full tab. You see it's got two holes in the side. And one of those holes is going to connect to the lever that we're going to pull with. So I'm going to go ahead and put a brad through this and show you it connects to the farthest hole on this lever. And then the other hole is going to connect to our dots. So with my lever, I've got to grab it, make sure that this little thing goes through this closest hole. And I actually lay mine out like this so that I don't get confused which direction this goes. I lay them where the holes are facing each other and then it makes more sense for me to put it together. So those go like that. That's the bottom part of our lever. And then this goes in whichever hole you pick of those four that have been punched into your bottom layer, wherever you want your slider to go. So you can kind of mess around with this, put it in a hole, move the slider. I just kind of looked at it and saw how far that was going to go to the side. But once you put that through there and snap your brad in place, you can mess with the mechanism and you can always take it out and put it in a new place if you want to. So here's how that mechanism works. See how far I want it to go. The other thing is if it goes further than you want it to, you can put a stopper. So we've got a lot of this mechanism covered up so you can always stick a piece of foam tape and stop it where you would like it to go. And you'll see that I do that in this next clip. I sped this one up a little bit, but I want to show you how I figured out where to put my stoppers and where to put my little foxes on this card. 
I do not have these glued on. I just want to kind of see where this tab is going and how far over it goes. And then I'm going to use some foam squares and I'm going to make a stopper because this thing will go all the way to the end of my card, but I know I don't need it to go that far. So I start with making a stopper on this side. You can make a stopper on the other side too, especially if you got a really narrow seam but I didn't feel like I needed one for this. So after that, I'm going to layer everything up with foam tape. I really like using these double-sided strips of foam because you can cut them if you need to, but it also, I mean, they're straight lines, which is nice. You can just kind of run them along the edges. You want to make sure you leave the area where your mechanism is going to move free. So see how I make a gap kind of right in those instead of running it all along the bottom? I wanted to check and just make sure. I think that my tab would run into something so I can put a little bit more there but I don't want to go too close to that and then you want to make sure you've got it popped up all the way around so I went and added my foam tape um, to different areas just to keep it all popped up and it also that one that I put over the tab I feel like that keeps you from pulling the tab the wrong direction it is easy to do so after I've got these on here then I'm going to keep messing with my seam and put it all together it's time to put the beach ball in place and I would recommend using a light stick adhesive. I ended up doing a tape runner on this. At first I was just seeing if I could do it without any adhesive but you see that that arch you kind of need to perfect your arch here so you want to make sure that you're checking out where this is going before you permanently permanently adhere it. The last thing to do with this is to trim off your piece right here that's the tab. It's going to be longer than what you need, but you want to trim that off so you can put the little arrow on it. And you also want to trim off your extra acetate up at the top there, but make sure you've got everything correct first and then you can trim it off and put that little arrow on there. Here's their final result. Look how cute this little ball is going back and forth. I'm using this as a teacher card and I put inside, thank you teacher. So it says, you brighten my life, and then when you flip it open, it says, thank you, teacher. The next card that I do, I'm going to emboss on the clouds, have a relaxing summer, you deserve it. So if you saw right there, I have my little swatch thing that I make for all of my embossing powders. It's really handy when you're looking at a background and you want to decide which of these colors would work. So for this one, we're going to use primary blue topaz to go with that background that's made out of salty oceans, peacock feathers, and salvaged patina. Last tip of the day is to emboss this with a Sizzix sticky pad inside your Misty. I love using this thing, especially for small pieces that I wasn't sure I was going to be putting any stamping on them. And so I've already cut them out, which makes them very hard to hang on to and get an accurate stamp. So just a little pointer for you. Hope you like that. I wanted to show you how good that blue color of the WOW embossing looks with these clouds. It's a great color for on the clouds and it also matches that salty ocean peacock feathers and salvaged patina color of the background. So it's a great color, definitely, definitely worth buying. Um, I'm going to emboss this and then I'm going to show you all the cards that I made so you can check them out. I'll try to leave those up there for a little bit just so that you can get all the details. If you have questions, please make sure to let me know in the comments below. I will link everything that I used in the video in the description and if you haven't taken the chance yet please like comment and subscribe to my channel i really appreciate it open up a few other videos for you to check out thanks so much guys see you soon